Welcome back, everyone, to the Highlighted Podcast. We're joined by me, Sam, and Sully. As usual, we got special guests for you guys. We got Peyton Turner, who's an NFL draft prospect from the University of Houston, who's currently competing in the 2021 Senior Bowl Mobile, Alabama. Peyton, welcome to the show, and thank you so much for joining us today. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. Of course. So uh, we'll go way back as the first question. We'll talk about high school. Uh, so your senior year, obviously, in high school, you know, in your senior year, you had those injuries that, you know, kind of dictated what star you would be and that allowed you to be the two-star recruit. And you obviously went on to go to the University of Houston. Um, but Houston was the only school to offer you that D1 offer. So did those, I guess, you know, did the other schools not really, I guess, believing in you and only getting that one D1 offer give you a lot of inspiration in college? And what was your whole mindset being recruited and being at Houston to kind of prove to others you deserved a better star rating and more offers? Yeah, I mean, uh, that was for sure always a chip on my shoulder. Uh, you know, senior year, senior year, like you said, I tore my ACL second game. I, funny thing is, I actually finished that game. Um, I finished, I, it happened in like second quarter and I just finished the game. I didn't find out my ACL was torn until like a week and a half later. I was I was actually hooping um, after, a bat, after a football workout. And, you know, I felt it kind of slip. I was like, dang, I didn't feel right. So I went, got an MRI. It turned out I had a torn ACL for like a week and a half I was running around on. So, uh, yeah, so, you know, I mean, that, that whole experience, that whole trip was wild. Um, I had some basketball offers. Football is probably, you know, my my third best sport, honestly, after baseball and basketball. But uh, baseball was a little bit too slow for me. It wasn't really my speed. So, uh, you know, basketball and football is where it was at. So, um you know, coming out of high school, like like you said, uh, a lot of a lot of schools, a lot of big schools stopped talking after I tore my ACL senior year. So, um, you know, it was always a chip on my shoulder. Everybody was telling me, you know, I couldn't make it and everything. So, yeah, it was always always in the back of my mind. It was always something that pushed me uh, just to just to do better. Yeah. So I was I think we were going to ask this question around the line, but I want to ask it now because you brought it up. Obviously, we saw how incredible your wingspan is from the senior bowl and the measurements there. And I was going to ask the question, did you happen to play basketball like in high school? Because obviously someone with that amount of wingspan, that's like the perfect fit for basketball. So, I mean, were you just as good as basketball at football? What's the whole thing on that? Yeah, uh, football, like I like I was alluding to, football probably wasn't my best sport, honestly. Uh, it'd probably baseball and then basketball and then football. But, yeah, I mean, I hoop, man. I, you know, I was playing 3-4, had some LeBron, you know, some LeBron James in me. Uh, chasing down stuff, blocking stuff from behind. So, uh, but yeah, um, I was for sure a hooper. I was about to say, I was like, you should be an all defensive wing in the NBA right now, but uh, <laughs> I see it went the other way. But uh, so when you started out of Houston, you played interior mostly. I know I kind of saw you were working as a four eye and, um, and Brian early comes in and, they decide to move you more outside. You dropped your weight down. So I was just wondering, since like earlier on in your career, you weren't getting as much production as you are now because you had your breakout season this year. So I was wondering, since they're moving you all over the line, what did you learn playing on the outside in order to improve your work on the interior? Because they use you all over the place and you produce everywhere, essentially. Right. Yeah, um, like you said, the first two years I, I went in there, we ran a 3-4 three, three, defense. So, you know, all the linebackers were making plays. You know, I was just holding gap. But I was about 290 back then, um, you know, playing 4-I, which, you know, I felt good playing in that defense at 290, playing 4-I, just holding gap. So uh, it was just a, something I had to adapt to. Um, you know, I broke my foot sophomore year back when I was like 290. So I missed spring ball. You know, I missed summer. So I came in in fall camp, and I thought I was going to play three techs. You know, I was 285. I was like – yeah, I'll, I'll play three tech. You know, I know the new staffs running a four four two uh, defense, so I'll play three tech. Um, I needed some help on the edge. Coach Early came in, coached me up. You know, I played some edge in fall camp, and we just took it and ran with it. So, you know, my junior year was just um, kind of me learning how to play on the edge after playing four I. You know, I only take two two quick steps, and I'm hitting somebody in four I and holding gap. But um, you know, like I said, junior year I didn't really have an off season. I just learned it in fall camp and just kind of ran with it throughout the season and kind of learned throughout the season. But this past year, like you mentioned it, uh, my production kind of jumped. Uh, I think that was due to uh, me just having like a full off season this consistent, uh, consistency. Yeah. So with switching positions, obviously you went, came in at 290, then 270, then 215. What was it like, like fluctuating between all that weight? Was it hard? Was it easy for you? 
Yeah, I mean, I came in at freshman year, 240, got up to 290 by sophomore year. And then, you know, I finally I dropped to 270 um, my senior year and just played played this whole past year, like between 65 and 70. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was just something I had to go through with the new staff, new defense, uh, what they wanted me at, what I wanted to be at, what I felt like I could move at. But, um, you know, I surprisingly didn't have too much trouble uh, dropping and putting on the weight um, for as much weight as it was. Yeah. yeah. So with oh. I, I got one more thing, Kurt. With uh, we were already kind of asked about the wingspan thing, but did you have any offers to play basketball, or you weren't really considering it? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I, I had a few Ivy League schools. I had Cal, uh, San Diego State, Texas State. Like I had some some mid majors, like just uh, around Texas and stuff. But uh, you know, uh, University of Houston came came up, and you know, offered a football scholarship. So. Just kind of seeing where I would where I would end up, um, looking into the future. What would you know? What, what would be the best in my, uh, in, be in my best interest uh, in the future, and what would take me the furthest? And you know, I chose football. I love them both, so it wasn't it wasn't really like I was giving anything up. So I was happy to choose football. Blessed to get that uh, offer. Yeah, and obviously, I think football turned out very well. As uh, you're <laughs> incredible at that. Um, but we'll go back to obviously. You know, we talked about how you know you were changing weights and you were playing this inside now you're playing kind of on the outside is there a like do you prefer one or the other because obviously you know like we said you line up as a traditional end you could be like three tech four i the outside backer a lot more you know what do you think you project best at the next level you know kind of what's your favorite position to play or you know are you almost like this swiss army knife kind of guy on the defensive side of the ball yeah, I mean, I think I'm leaning a little bit more like to that Swiss Army knife. Uh, most of the teams I've talked to have been, you know, mentioning defensive end or outside backer. Uh, but, you know, I know that if I go to a team where we have a lot of good, great pass rushers, you know, I can bump down and I can rush on the guard. You know, it's fun. It's fun. It's a different world, you know, rushing on the edge and rushing uh, down on the interior. So, uh, you know, you get matched up with guards. I'm usually going to be longer than them, probably quicker than them. But, uh, you know, it's a different world, but I think I can do it all. So, you know, I think that just adds value to my to my stock. Yeah, man. And since you brought it up, uh, I don't know if you can really say this, but uh, what teams have you talked to so far? Because <laughs> this is the since there's no combine this year, you know, there's no like those those weird interviews at the combine that we hear about all the time. So uh, if you could share that, I mean, we'd love to hear it, but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know how, how much in depth they'd want me to talk about it, but I mean, I don't mind talking about it. Uh, you know, at the senior bowl, we, we, we've talked to it. I mean, I've talked to, uh, pretty much every team, uh, the Rams aren't here, but, um, I, I had a phone interview with them a while back. So, I mean, I've talked to all 32 teams while I've been here. So, uh, you know, that was a pretty cool experience. You know, it's nothing like telling the same story 30 times, but, uh, uh it was a good experience. So it was nice talking to everybody, getting, getting their opinions, getting their feedback, um, you know, and just learning from them. Peyton, how are we feeling about the Giants? I'm I'm a Giants fan. You want to come to New York? <laughs> yeah, I mean New York's pretty pretty dope, man. Uh, <laughs> you got a, you got a big market, uh, yeah. fun team. Uh, but I mean, like, you know, who, whoever wants me, who, whoever wants me, you know, where, where they got me seated at right now. <laughs> well, well, did you did you ever like when, when you were growing up and you were watching football? Did you have a particular team that you were a fan of, or you're pretty much down to go wherever? Yeah, I mean, I grew up watching the Texans just because I was in Houston. Uh, I grew up watching a lot of players, uh, you know, grow, growing up and just in Houston. Being in Houston, I watched a lot of Houston players. So uh, the Texans, the hometown team, just just cool. My dad's a Cowboys fan. My mom's a pretty big Broncos fan. But uh, most of my family, believe it or not, uh, messes with Green Bay. Or uh, I have a cousin that just loves Philly. So, I mean, I, I've watched football every, every, every weekend uh, with the family. You know, we have a dinner, cook it up. Uh, and just sit around and watch football all day after church. So uh, that's just the way way life goes. So you know, I'm open to any whatever team. Yeah. So I heard that you mentioned Eagles and Cowboys, and me and Sully, you know, just always a Giants fan. I'm a Washington fan. So I don't know about that. <laughs> it's a no go. It's a no go in this yeah. podcast. You're not oh, allowed yeah. to go to the pain. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> I mean, I'll talk to all 32, man. So who who knows? Yeah. Who you hey, man. You did mention you mentioned your family's Green Bay. I got you on that one. So. uh that's our Packers fan over there. Yeah, <laughs> look, I, I'm I'm recovering right now, but yeah. uh, we're doing all right. We're so doing all right. yeah, but uh, I guess that does kind of translate to uh, our go to the Senior Bowl, and uh, there's no combine this year, like I brought up earlier. So, how are you approaching the Senior Bowl now that the combine has actually been 
canceled. And um, how are you using this to showcase what you can bring to the table? And uh, I'll follow up after, after you answer this part. I mean, it just makes uh, this time in Mobile all that more unique, all that more precious. Uh, you know, this is the only time scouts are really going to be able to put an eye, like, right on you, uh, with the exception of uh, Pro Day, uh, which I hopefully, you know, we'll still have and everything, uh, you know. But this is this makes it that much more special uh, for you to be able to talk to scouts, you be able to talk to GMs, you be able to talk to uh, head coaches. Uh, it's just, you know, just got to value it. Yeah, I was going to ask, I was going to follow up with uh, if you knew when Houston's pro day was, because I was trying to look for it and I could not find it. I don't think there's something set in stone yet. Um, I mean, do you yeah. know anything about that yet? Yeah, so, I mean, they're still trying to get, they're still trying to get uh, information just from the NFL and just from, you know, there's a lot of facilities that are going to do their own little combine, get numbers and send them out. So, uh, you know, I don't think it's finalized yet, probably sometime in March or March or early April, April, I'd imagine. But uh yeah, I don't think they have anything set quite yet. Okay. This is um, a little bit off topic, but it, you might have to think about this one also. But watching the NFL like you did as growing up, is there any player in the NFL that you kind of, you know, draw inspiration from, try to model their game, stuff like that? Uh, I mean, when I was growing up, I didn't really focus on anybody to model my game after because I didn't really even know my own game. Um but, you know, I always liked watching Mario Williams uh, and J.J. Watt with the Texans. Like, I just like like the way they play. You know, I like J.J. Watt's a great dude off the field as well. So, uh, I mean, I think he's just a good, great role model, like, all around. But the way he plays, you know, he's always playing hard, always playing physical. And, you know, he gets after the quarterback. So, you know, he's always entertaining. You're not wrong. J.J. Watt's a beast. Gets hurt every year. He's got he's to gotta stay on the field. But yeah. he's he's definitely a beast. Um, outside of football, so obviously quarantine started, everything's been, you know, weird the past year, whatever it is. What are some things you like doing off the field that are not necessarily related to football? You got any weird hobbies you have or anything like that? I mean, it's not too weird, Sam. I see you're in a little gaming chair uh, over there. Yeah, I got, I got something, something similar to that, but yeah, I mean, I'm on the game all the time. I always, I'm always on the sticks, uh, call of duty, uh, used to play Fortnite pretty heavy. Uh, so, you know. They ever had like a pro am or something uh, with with Fortnite? <laughs> I'll be there, but yeah, they I'm, did I'm that. Free, free. Juju, all the athletes are streaming now. That's yeah. the thing. That's because yep. it's kind of like you know building your brand off the field. It's right. not necessarily you got it. You know, football is going to get you very far, but it's only going to get you so far after you retire. They got that to rely back on, or during the off season or whatnot. You ever think about doing something like that? Yeah, man. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully I can get this uh, football thing kicked off and started, and you know get get a little stream going, get some get some and so show some personality and everything so that'd be that'd be pretty cool i think yeah i'll be your first subscriber Peyton. i'll tell you that hey less hey man <laughs> if you need some tips solely's the solely's the streamer that's in true the group, so oh yeah, yeah. I, yep okay, i got my bet. own twitch stream going on it just started about six months ago but we're chugging bet yeah so it's it's there but uh anyone have anything else to ask yeah i'll ask i guess maybe this will be the last question whatever you guys have but we brought up Obviously, the combine, and obviously that's not happening right now. And, you know, we've seen in the past with the whole combine, these like random or weird questions. I think Sammy alluded to it earlier that people will ask. So weird question, I guess you could say, but Payne, what is the, I guess, weirdest question you've ever been asked that relates to like, you know, some that we've seen throughout the combine or just, you know, I guess an interview question that you've had. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've had I've had a few good ones. Uh, the Chiefs had a good one for me. Uh, I think, um, I mean, I had a few good ones. I think I think the the most odd, like out of left field, out of right field, one that I've got was last night. My last interview was with uh, the Vikings, and they had asked. Uh, they were like, uh, "Well, this this is a little weird, but uh, you know, we noticed that you follow a lot of uh, models on Instagram." I was like, "I was like, what, bro? What, like?" Y'all, y'all are my Instagram followers. Like that's that was that was that was that was out of nowhere. So I was like, I mean, yeah, I mean, I like I like beautiful people. You don't. So you know, I got I got a laugh out of the uh, the GM out of that one. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, the Vikings interview went well, well, but that was definitely the weirdest question uh, I got last night. So, hey, they're trying to, the Vikings. They do that thing. They try and catch you lacking, Lamont. Yeah, Let's just let them. Let them no know. doubt. <laughs> hilarious answer though i completely appreciate that answer. yeah it's a good answer. good answer they're really digging deep on that one yeah uh, jesus 
All right. All well, right. I think I think that's going to be it for Highlight the All Sports Culture Podcast. Once again, thank you, Peyton, for coming on. Um, good luck in the Senior Bowl and obviously your pro day whenever that happens. And um, good luck in the NFL out there. Hopefully you go to the Giants. I'll see you out there. <laughs> I appreciate y'all. Right. Thanks for having me. Of course. Yeah, thanks, of course, man. Of course. man. We'll be rooting for you. All right. Take care.